Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Feeding your boa constrictor the right amount is critical for its health and to ensure breeding success. Today I'm going to review what I feel to be the optimal feeding schedule for captive boa constrictors. You know, I've commented on this topic quite a bit before, but I feel it necessary to re-explore the topic. Uh, I've, I've seen uh, quite a number of comments lately from people indicating that they're confused about this issue. And I've also seen quite a few really depressing pictures on the Facebook boa forums with these morbidly obese boas. So I feel it's really necessary to review this topic because some people are just not getting, you know, what they should be feeding their boa constrictors. So I remember as a kid reading books that advised on boa care. And in general, these books were wrong. They advised to feed the boa constrictors and pretty much every other snake once a week. And we know now that this is much too much to feed a boa constrictor every week. And then if you do this, this is likely to lead to a morbidly obese boa and greatly reduce its life expectancy. You wanna feed your boa enough to ensure slow, steady growth. And you want the boa to remain fit and trim and muscular. I've seen many pictures lately on, especially on the Facebook boa groups, where people have these morbidly obese boas and it's just, you know, really depressing and shocking and appalling. There's really no excuse for this. I mean, some of these boas look literally like stuffed sausages, like someone just stuffed them till they're about to burst. And they have these kind of rolls of fat. It's really, it's really depressing. Um, Another giveaway is you see the snake's body and then you see its head next to the body and the head is like this tiny little head, much, you know, uh, much smaller in diameter than the body. The body is like, you know, four or five times the diameter of the head. And this boa was probably grown way too fast and is morbidly obese. So, um, I, you know, I, you can probably tell I'm getting a little bit annoyed about this, but I emotionally, it, it kind of pisses me off when I see people doing this because Boas, um, in their natural environment, they don't have a lot of food. And they've evolved this very uh, aggressive feeding response because when there's food available in the wild, it makes sense evolutionarily for the boa to eat as much as it can get because there's not going to be a lot in the future. And they can build up a reserve. I mean, boas in the wild will often go many months without eating. But when you take a boa and put it in captivity where there's plenty of food and someone is just feeding it every week as much as it will eat, it's a, you know, a recipe for obesity. And this you, you know, is really no different than what's going on in the human population, especially in the United States with the epidemic of morbid obesity in this country. These morbidly obese boas are not going to uh, survive really long. You know, the obesity puts a huge amount of stress on their heart and other organs. So you might be looking at a lifespan of about 10 years or even less for an obese boa. And they're not going to be good breeders if they even breed at all. So, you know, I feel strongly that people should feed their boas an appropriate amount to ensure the health of their boa. Now I'm going to go over my basic feeding guide for smooth, steady, optimal growth. Baby boas up to two years of age should be fed every 10 to 14 days. From age two to three, they should be fed about once every two weeks. From age three to five, they should be fed about once every three weeks. And then mature adult boas age five or older should in general be fed about once every four weeks. And these are guidelines. Again, some boas are gonna get a little bit more or a little bit less food to maintain their ideal body weight. The important thing is you monitor your, bo your boa's body condition to make sure that it's fit and trim and healthy and muscular and not becoming obese. And when you feed the boa a food item, this should be a prey item that leaves a slight bulge. You don't want to feed it the largest prey item that it could uh, get down at that size. You want something that just leaves a slight bulge. And when the prey item no longer leaves a slight bulge, you can't see the bulge, you want to move up to the next largest uh, size prey item for your boa. Another thing to monitor to make sure that you're feeding your boa an optimal feeding regimen is to measure its growth. And in general, boas will grow a slow but steady pace. And this will be anywhere from about six inches to about two feet a year. And it varies depending on the type of boa. 
in general, the morph boas have the most growth potential and they can put on two feet a year for their first few years. Most of the locality boas will grow about a foot or so a year. And then some locality boas, such as true red tail boas, and of course the dwarf boas, grow even slower. And I've had some true red tails that only grow about six inches or so a year. And this is normal. They just have a very slow growth rate and you really can't push them. And I've seen a lot of people online asking about their growth rate of their boas and they're concerned that their boa isn't growing fast enough for a true red tail. And again, as long as your boa is putting on slow, steady growth, which could be as little as six inches a year, it's fine. So for example, this is a three-year-old Suriname red tail boa. This animal is currently about three and a half feet or so, and this is where it should be. It shouldn't be any bigger than this. Uh, in general, people think that these true red tails are, you know, they get huge and they grow real fast, and it's just not true at all. This boa is exactly where it needs to be given its age. In contrast to the true red tail boas, as I mentioned, the morph boas grow quite a bit faster. And this animal is a hypomoron boa that's the same age, it's about three years old, as the red tail I just showed you. You can clearly see how much bigger this animal is. This animal is probably about uh, two feet or so bigger than the Suriname I showed you, and of course considerably thicker. But it should be mentioned that this boa was on the same feeding regimen as the Suriname I just showed you. With both of these boas, they were fed about once every two weeks for the first two years or so. And um, the Hypomeron morph boa did end up getting more food, but because it was growing faster, it was moved up to larger rodents faster. However, the interval between the feedings remained the same about every two weeks. And in fact, with this hypomeron, I actually backed off to about once every three weeks or so for the last year, just because she's growing you know, so big. And this particular animal will probably be ready to breed in 2022. So when this animal's four years old, uh, morph boas just have the genetic capacity to breed faster and I think that's because of their domestication and these animals really are at this point domestic animals they've been changed so much compared to their wild uh, ancestors and they just have the capacity to grow faster reproduce faster which they've been selected for in captivity with this optimal slow growth feeding regimen most boas are going to reach close to their maximal size in about five years or so. And for most boas, that'll be in the range of about six to eight feet, with the dwarf and semi-dwarf boas being smaller at about four to six feet. And then some of the true red tails will take a little bit longer to reach their adult size. But remember, boas, like all snakes, continue to grow throughout their life. So some of these red tails may eventually reach very large sizes of over 10 feet uh, with sufficient age. Overfeeding your boa is not only detrimental to its health, but it's also going to greatly reduce your odds of being successful breeding it. So everyone's heard about power feeding boas where people will attempt to get them to breeding size in as little as two to three years, sometimes even less, by feeding them too much. Power feeding not only leads to health problems with your boas, but it also doesn't really improve your breeding success. Obese boas are less likely to be able to mate and typically have lower fertility, and then obese females are less likely to be able to give birth successfully to a healthy litter. This is a six-year-old female Suriname red tail boa who had her first litter this year. And you can see she's not huge. I got a lot of comments from people asking about why she's so small or do you stunt your snakes? No, this is a perfectly healthy six-year-old adult female. This animal is about five and a half feet long. She might get another foot or two. Um, Suriname, you know, it's a misconception that these animals are giants, as I've said numerous times before in my videos. But this female had a really nice litter of very healthy babies, no slugs, no stillborns, and they were born extremely rapidly because there was no slugs she had to push out. And you can see this animal is muscular. She's slim. You know, she's not round. She's more like a square, like a loaf of bread almost. This is what they should look like. She's a little slim now. You know, she gave birth to a litter about a month and a half ago and she's putting the weight back on. She's not gonna breed next year. She'll get a year off. But this is a healthy adult breeding Suriname red tail boa. 
and this is she's much healthier than if I had power fed her and you know tried to push her to this huge size she would have been obese and unlikely to have produced a healthy litter so if you want your boas to be successful breeding there's no shortcuts you got to grow them slowly uh, but steadily and you're much more likely to be successful so I hope this video was helpful as always please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments or if you have any uh, uncertainty about how much you should be feeding your boa so that it doesn't end up obese uh, thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas